It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you grow your e-commerce business faster and more efficiently by cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and guidance from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. We've declared 2016 to be the year of the customer. You can find out all about that at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash the customer. And as part of it, we're currently bringing you one of our bonus podcast series. This series is all about customer attraction, because this quarter we're focused on how you can get more potential customers to your website and start that all important trust building conversation with them. Last week, we published the first in the series. It's called Marketing You Can Use to Get the Attention of Your Potential Customers. You can understand what that one's about, but it certainly is packed full of great tips on getting the right people to your website. That one's free, as they all are, and this one is available for you to listen to right now. Later this week, we're publishing the second in the series called Customer First Content Marketing, which is all about how to use the content on your site to attract customers and encourage them to trust you. Then we wrap it all up next week with the all important 20 ways to increase your customer email signups because we all want more email signups, don't we? You can find out all about it in our podcast feed on your listening device of choice or go to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast to listen and for the rest of the details. But now let's get on with today's interview. Hello, Master Plan World. Welcome to our latest podcast. It's a pleasure, as always, to have you listening to us. I'm Chloe Thomas, creator of the e-commerce Master Plan. I'm an author, speaker and consultant, and I focus on e-commerce business strategy and marketing. It's always a great pleasure to welcome one of our listeners to the podcast as a guest. And today I get to do just that. So let me introduce you to today's special guest. Johnny Lomax is e-commerce and marketing manager at William May Jewellers. William May has been involved in the British jewellery industry for 190 years. They sell vintage jewellery specialising in luxury watches and diamond engagement rings. The website's been live for 18 months and in the first year they turned over £220,000, including a doubling of the November-December business. Hi Johnny, I've just given our listeners a very quick overview of you and your business and where you are now. So how did you get started in e-commerce? Hi Chloe, great to speak to you. Um, So personally I started working in the e-commerce sector around 2010 uh, when I was employed by a design um, e-commerce provider called EKM PowerShop, building and coding and designing the, the sites for the customer's um, although I did enjoy, you know, the technical side of things, I wanted to utilise my degree a bit more uh, in, in management training. So I took the step and moved over to e-commerce management. Uh, I worked for another online retailer before joining William May in 2014. I was brought in uh, just midway through the build of the uh, the, the new website uh, before we launched it in July. William May is the online arm of May's pawnbrokers and jewellers, uh, family-owned um, jewellers in the Greater Manchester area. And Nick, the director of the company, had made that decision uh, early on to launch it as a standalone website. Oh, cool! So, so what am I allowed to ask? Because I'm sure people will be wondering what. Who did you work for between EKM and um, William May? It was another jewellers called Burns Jewellers. They're uh, another. You know, family-run uh, jewelers. They have six stores again over the Greater. Oh. No, sorry, no. I think they have eight stores over the Greater Manchester area. Of course, you're becoming a bit of a jewelry specialist, then. I am. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's maybe why I got the position here. Um, I always think. Um, I always think jewelry is one of the most difficult things to sell online because one person's engagement ring is another person's. You know. One one person's idea of what they mean when they search for engagement ring is very different from another person's idea of what they search for for engagement ring, and the keywords don't really enable you to to tie people in. So maybe we'll talk a bit about that a bit about that later on. So I would say being being a specialist in jewellery is is not going to do you any harm as the years as the years roll by. Yeah, definitely, it helped a lot with uh, choosing an engagement ring a few years ago. As well, <laughs> <so that's good. laughs> Knew exactly what you needed to get. Then. Yeah. Excellent. And she said yes? She did, yeah. We got married last year, actually. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, cool. So um so you're just starting to tell us a little bit about the the fact that they've only they was just started building the website when you got there. So how um how is 
uh, William May Jewelers set up right now. You're in the UK. Do you sell globally or are you all about the UK? Yeah, so we 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 don't market to any um, other countries. We, we've had a handful of sales through the website worldwide, but um, we don't really push that. The main reason being that we do get returns and, and having to get returns from other countries and, and certainly with the value of the goods that we sell, you know, we, we can't do as many security checks if the purchase is made overseas on the card details. So we get quite a few fraudulent orders from overseas, but we don't tend to send a lot out really. Yeah, it's um, it's. I wanted to ask you about the product as well, because you're not only are you working in a, an area that's quite hard to market, the jewellery sector, you're also you know one-off pieces mm. as, a, as a, I guess as a result in many ways of the of the porn business on the side but you've so you've also got very high price points it's kind of like a, a many people in e-commerce would see that as a nightmare scenario each product only exists once mm. and each product is pretty high value I mean you know having had a look around the site you've got an awful lot of things in the several thousand area Yes, it, it is difficult. And, you know, as you can imagine, a lot of people want to view that product. Um, you know, if you're going to fork out a couple of thousand pounds on a, a you know, be it a watch, a bracelet, a ring, whatever, there, you would you would think that most people would want to view it. But, you know, we do get a lot of orders where they, we can send it out to them and they're, they're more than delighted with it. Um, but we also offer, you know, 30-day free return, no-hassle returns, so that you know you've got that peace of mind that it can be returned if you don't like it when you receive it, and you know it works quite well for us. That so that's the the key where you try and uh, get that trust bit built between you and the customer that they're willing to come on your site, spend a couple of grand, and you know trust they're going to receive the good and their goods and they're going to like it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and and we don't have a huge amount of returns. The majority of the time, it's just that they weren't too keen on it or it wasn't the size that they felt it was, uh, you know, that it looked like in the picture. Uh, and that brings another issue for us, the actual photography of jewellery. It's probably one of the hardest things to photograph. Um, Definitely. You know, to, to, <laughs> to show it at its best. You know, you get a lot of online uh, jewellers who will Photoshop the hell out of it or, you know, they'll either um, use CAD to, to, you know, just to show that. that really? Image. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So they they create a a, a computer aided design. So not a photograph. They mm. get all the structure out and create a fake version of it in cyberspace. Yeah, I mean, wow. Because a lot of high street jewels, especially, you know, they they are designed using CAD and then it's sent off to be molded and 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 created. And uh, they'll just use that image, you know, to sell it. And you get customers who. You know, they'll put a range of what the diamond could be. They don't give you the exact details, you know, like we do, because every item is individual and we have every piece of information that someone would require. So, you know, it's a great selling point that we can list every individual detail about a diamond or, you know, about a specific um, item, you know, comparing ourselves against some other, you know, high street jewels, especially. We're completely transparent with everything. Wow, so you must spend a lot of time um, prepping each individual product before it goes on the site. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, you know, obviously it's um, it's bought in f- through the stores. It then goes through to the workshop who polish it up and clean everything. And the majority of the time, you know, it's a pre-owned item, but it comes out of the workshop looking, you know, like the day it was moulded yeah. to start with. Um, and then, yes, once it gets passed through to ourselves uh, on the website, it's photographed, all the attributes are filled out, product titles, descriptions eventually. You know, that's quite a time-consuming one, the descriptions. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there is a long process between that and, and, you know, it does take its time. So how many of you are there in the team working on the website? So day to day, there's just two of us who run the website, um, but it's certainly a joint effort from the whole company. You know, we have 40 members of staff across the six stores, and um, you know, if we if if someone wants further information of it, there's so many weird questions that people ask <laughs> about the items that you don't expect that we don't have in the attributes. You know, we've even been known to. Uh, 
get the staff to model the items so that they really? can size them. Yeah, they, they don't always like it, but uh, I offer them a box of chocolates or something. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, we, we, we it's a complete... And, and then they also post the items out as well from the stores. So it's a complete joint, you know, joint effort from, from all staff in the company. So is the product that's on the website also available for sale in, in one of the stores at the same time? It is, yeah, yeah. And, and that- how do you manage that? If you know not selling it twice, fortunately we don't have we we've had I think in the eighteen months maybe two occasions where something sold in store and online at the same time. Um, going back to my previous employer, it happened a lot because they were cheap. They were um, it was more fashion based jewelry, yeah. and you know it was a much quicker turnaround in the store and online. So it happened all the time there and you know we just had to explain to customers but as i say fortunately here it's not been um it's it's not happened too many times so because you're you've only had two in 18 months it's not something you've 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 bothered to do the integration to to deal with because it's not really worth it for two incidences there's other things to do isn't there it's not no and the other issue we do have is that this stock control system um is a pawnbroking system and there aren't many people out there that offer pawnbroking systems. So, um, you know, this system that we use, although it's great, it works for the stores, it doesn't always work as well when you're trying to uh, implement it through to the website. I mean, everything updates from that system to the website and it controls the sales back and forward and everything. But, oh, cool. um, you know, in terms of, you know, really digging deep into, a, you know, a system that was built for online only, then, you know, you, you do struggle a bit there. Yeah, but it's it's kind of one of those areas. If there's someone who's created great software for pawnbroking, you really don't want to get in that, you know, that everyone who works in that side of the business is happy with. You don't want to go anywhere near trying to respec it. No, definitely not. <laughs> Utter <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what system have you got the website on? Is it EKM PowerShop or is it a, a different one? No, it's not. Um have you heard of EKM PowerShop? I have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's much. It's a kind of smaller um, system compared to you know what a lot of people need. You know, it's more based around the eBay and yeah. um, you know one man band uh, businesses. Really, we're built on a system called Visual Soft. Oh yeah, I know yeah. Visual Soft. Yeah, they're, they're they're a great company. You know, as with any company, you know, there's certain problems that you have but they are a great company to work with um i've been working with them for the past four years i worked with them with the previous company i worked for as well oh cool maybe another reason why i got the, the job here as well <laughs> but no visual stuff you know the 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 system works well uh, and has all the features that you do you need from an e-commerce system so have you added any key widgets or plugins we keep it quite simple, to be honest. Um, you know, the, the major one that we focus on with the company being so young is, well, the online arm of the company being so young is, is Trustpilot. Um, you know, it's a great plugin to have on the website, uh, you know, to build that trust and, you know, push it out to, to, to new customers. Um, and we do get quite a lot of our customers mentioning that they've seen the reviews on Trustpilot and, you know, it it's helped build that trust in in buying from us um in terms of the technical side i think the main one that we use is uh, zopin the chat system oh yes uh you know again it just enables us to communicate live with the customers through the website uh you know answer any questions but to be honest we'd much rather have a conversation over the phone with them and you know really sell the products and demonstrate um you know the value and and uh and quality of it quite difficult to do that when you're typing away to someone Um, yeah with a product like jewelry especially the higher end jewelry you've got to be able to kind of evangelize about the product haven't you because it it really is a it's an emotional purchase and black and white doesn't always cover it yeah definitely and I mean even even talking to someone it's so difficult to explain it to to them what you know what a diamond looks like or um you know what the the uh, color and clarity is of it and and that's again why we offer that 30 day no hassle free returns that you know we just say just order it you know we'll get it to you you can take a look at it um 
and you can see it for yourself then and you know a lot a lot of people do take us up on that so do you get a big returns rate not, not really no no it's not too bad uh you know again i think because we don't oversell the products and we 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 give as much information as possible you know we have it's, it can be a bit frustrating at times because people <laughs> send us an email saying oh i love it thank you so much and you kind of say well can you just leave us a review about it and you never <laughs> so you know we we get we we do have so many happy customers um you know with the items so we, we the return rate I mean, December, thinking, um, you know, that's been the busiest time. We've probably only had about four or five returns from December. Wow, uh, which is impressive because that's people buying for other people. And I yeah, always think jewellery yeah. is one of the most difficult things to buy for somebody else. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I was quite surprised by that when uh, we kind of got past the, the returns <laughs> cut off in January and we didn't have as many uh as we imagined yeah which which you know it clearly goes to show that putting all that effort in up front of proving you know having the customer service and proving to everyone that you've got that there with the trust pilot reviews pushing that money day money uh, 30 day money back guarantee in order to show people that look have a look at it see what you like and putting the product content to the utmost and investing the time in that it's clearly paying off isn't it yeah definitely yeah 100 percent Cool. Okay, then, uh, Johnny, I think uh, my next question for you is going to be, what do you think is the most awesome thing about the business right now? I think, well, we've we've discussed it quite a bit there, but it's, you know, the service that we offer and and the value that we offer to the customers as well. Uh, You know, in the 18 months we've been live, we've had one negative dealing with a customer, which couldn't be prevented at all, Uh, you know, mainly because the payment system flagged the details as being fraudulent. Uh, it, it then turned out that it wasn't actually fraudulent, but he wasn't too happy and uh, cancelled the order. But, you know, we're dealing with thousands of pounds worth of stock, of I- thousand pound items, and we don't want to take a risk. You know, we, we do have quite uh, stringent checks that we do on our customers um but yeah i think it's just you know like i say the 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 service and value that we offer to customers excellent and it it is one of those unfortunate downsides of being you know selling high ticket goods is you've got to listen to the fraud engine uh you know and what it tells you and if that means every once in every 18 months a customer is offended by the fact you've you've caused them fraud you know you you deal with it the best you can but it's it's probably saved you a hundred customers who weren't really customers so it's it's one of those tricky fronts isn't it yeah we get a lot of fraudulent orders uh we have our security settings set quite high uh through through sage pay but um you know we've got that for a reason and it's something that i brought across from from the last company that you know you have to do your checks and everything and you know sometimes that even means checking an address on google and kind of going on street view and you know you can be (laughs) judgmental sometimes on 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 maybe where you're posting it to but you do have to do those checks and you know i wouldn't it's kind of all on my head i guess uh so i wouldn't want to be the one that sends out you know a five thousand pound watch and it turns out to be fraudulent and we lose the money on that yeah it's it's um one mistake is very costly when you're in the uh the uh the high-end jewelry business yeah yeah so um what's on the to-do list right now the main project i've had at the moment is um you know analyzing the sales and and customers and traffic that we gain through the Christmas months, uh, working out how we can get that repeat custom, um, and more importantly, gaining new customers. Uh, you know, we, we get a, a good amount of traffic through the site, but when you, I mean, I guess it's like any site, you know, you compare the amount of visitors you get to the actual sales and the percentages are way, way off, but, you know, we, we want to demonstrate to people, you know, this value that we have and, you know, work out ways of creating that repeat custom and you know building the uh, the new customers we're um i'm going to be doing quite a bit more in email marketing over the next few months um you know we've built up quite a good email customer marketing um list so you know that's going to be a, a big priority at the moment what software are you using for your email out of interest i'm using mailchimp 
Um, we're kind of still under the, you know, we're in the free bracket at the moment. Nice. So, um, <laughs> and it's a very so, good system, so, Mailchimp. <laughs> it is, yeah. We use we use Mailchimp for the um, for the pawnbroking side as well, and we're paying for that because we have quite a lot of um, of email addresses mm. in there. So you know, it, it works hand in hand, really, using both the, using the same systems for both. Nice. So on, on the on the list for coming up, then you've got uh, analyzing cr- the Christmas traffic, so you can repeat it. More email is definitely part of the plans for the year. Anything else on that to do list? Um. So to be fair, that's probably enough for anybody. It is, yeah, yeah. We're also we um we, we kind of got stung a bit by a social marketing company that we we employed throughout last year. Uh, so we're we're just trying to decide at the moment whether to start start afresh with our Facebook account. They um, they seem to have built quite a lot of followers that well fake followers basically, oh. and uh, you know it's grow yeah it's great that it's grown the the following list. You know we've got like twelve thousand likes I think, but we're not getting much interaction. So you know I know that the, the algorithms with Facebook have changed massively over the last six to 12 months so that's another job uh that we're that we're currently undertaking to to maybe find someone else to to manage that and do it the right way yeah always always a challenge um Mm. that one definitely so just we mentioned earlier uh, we mentioned a couple of marketing methods there and you said you know that you know most of your focus is on marketing for the coming year including the analysis piece and i said up front about how jewelry is quite a difficult um, products to market online are you willing to say a little bit about you know if you've got a couple of top tips for any other jewelry businesses out there that you're willing the ones you're willing to share <laughs> in terms of sorry in terms of generating in, in terms uh, of generating traffic to a jewelry website yeah i mean the number one again for me is word of mouth you know it's it's a huge it's it's building that trust from some with someone you know um I think you know the the way that we drive a lot of our traffic through to the site is through the Google uh, product listing ads, and it's certainly the most direct way to show your products off to the customers. And you know, we we have two markets on the website. You know, we've got the pre-owned watches, which is extremely price sensitive. You know, there's so many different variations of a model uh, that if we were to use traditional text ads, something like that. We'd spent it would just cost too much. Yeah. Um, the second market is the pre-owned jewelry, which because they're all one-off items, you know you, that that customer or potential customer is typing in those keywords and they're being served with you know exactly what we have on offer. So I, it's something I used heavily with the previous company. It's sometimes it's something that we've also focused on well we've put the majority of our marketing budget into the PLAs mm. uh, AdWord, uh, Google PLAs um, and we've not really done much text text ad marketing really so uh, text ads for jewelry is a is a nightmare I've I've been there yeah. <laughs> I've done <laughs> it and go- golly it takes an awful lot of work mm. um, to a lot of a lot of work on trial and error and you end up spending an awful lot of money on clicks to find out what does and doesn't work. So I would say, you know, when I, when I saw, you know, Google launching the product listing ads, the Google shopping campaigns, I was like, jewellery retailers are just going to go nuts for this because finally you can bring visual and price into the mix and stop people who aren't interested from clicking. Yeah, that's it. And and, and it's, it's, it's serving exactly what that customer is looking for as well. Um, and certainly with some of our items, you know, we, we one of the only people about online selling them. Um, yeah. There's, there's one specific, I don't know if I'd want to say this really. <laughs> oh, you, you're allowed to keep uh, your trade secrets if yeah, you want to. <laughs> I mean, there's one product that we found that was selling really well uh, online and there's not many people that, that sell it really. Uh, we, we're, we're very Definitely well- Definitely don't mention it. <laughs> no, I, we're very well priced in the stores. We, you know, the, the prices online are exactly the same as they are in the stores, and we're very well priced. And we have a lot of people from, uh, you know, down south, especially in London, ordering these items um, because they must be paying so much more for it in London than what you pay for it up here. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's it's about finding that you know key 
category of product that you can really push and you know the PLAs serve that so well. And presumably for that, whatever that product is, you've got the shops on high alert that the moment they get one of those in, um, it gets sent through to you guys to put on the web as well as keep in the stores. Yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, there's a, there is a certain process that the company takes in terms of um, processing the, the stock and it has to, we're almost working a month, a couple of months behind on that, you know, just because of the amount that we get through. But yeah. th- we do prioritise some. Um, and to be honest, this certain sort of product is, we're not that high on it anymore. We've not got a, a huge amount of stock. Um, so we are starting to look at other ways of buying it in at the moment. Yeah, you, you, when you find those little those little areas, you've really got to race after them, haven't you? Yeah. Um, you mentioned when we were talking about that, as well as the Google product listings, you mentioned trust and word of mouth. Am I right to assume that that's just giving great customer service and pointing out to customers that they might want to tell their friends? Yeah, 100%. And I think, cool. you know, that's something that uh, with the email marketing, I mean, we can't offer discounts. You know, you see a lot of companies offering 10% off your first order and things like that. And we can't really do that because the margins are all over the place with our, our stock. Um, depending on what we bought it in, uh, at. and uh, and also what we sell it on at, because we, being a pawnbroker, we have a duty to sell some items, um, you know, at the market rate. So we can't go discounting them. All oh, right. It's a very complex system, the pawnbroking one. <laughs> one but- that I don't know a huge amount about because I do kind of tend to keep myself on the you know online side, but yeah. It's crazy some of the things that you do pick up on. Okay, cool. Right. Well, um, what I'm going to suggest we do now is that we move in to the top tips round. Um, And I love this section, as you all know, because it gives me and our listeners some really quick ideas for taking our businesses to the next level. So, um, Johnny, you okay to move straight into the top tips? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Brilliant. So the book top tip, if everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? The first one was uh, actually on your list of books that you recommended in the podcast before Christmas, which I've recently finished. Uh, and that's uh, Clickology by Graham Jones. It, it gives a great insight into the psychology of customers and you know their shopping habits. And although I think a lot of people would recognize you know the points that the book makes, it's great to you know read the reasons behind the shopper's decision and uh, you know make decisions that you make changing on your website, you know, you you're basing them on facts then by reading, you know, that sort of book. Um, And you you suggested you might have had a second book for us there. Yeah, I did. Um, And this isn't really an e-commerce book per se, but it's it's certainly changed uh, my life over the last few months. It's a book called The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrond. I don't know if you've heard of it. I've heard of it. And as someone yeah. who refuses to get up until eight o'clock, if I can possibly get away with it, I'm not a fan. But I believe many are. So please, please do carry on, Johnny. Yeah, I mean, I've got to say, I, mean, I was exactly the same, you know, kind of uh, everything rushing around, jumping in the shower, breakfast and all that. But, uh, you know, at eight o'clock to get into work for nine. But, uh, you know, since reading it in the last few months, it's certainly changed, you know, the way I am. I get up at half six now. Wow. Um, I take my hat off to you, but I'm, yeah. I have no intention of joining you anytime no, soon. I can imagine a lot of people don't, and a lot of people think that I'm quite sad for doing it. I mean, I don't at the weekends, but, you know, in the week, it it gives you a chance to, uh, you know, it, well, the book is kind of written around, you know, changing your habits and achieving your goals and, you know, what better way to do it when no one else is up in the morning and, and bothering you. Yeah, I I know it's it's worked for a lot of people. So so thank yeah. you for adding that one to our list. Mm. Um, so the traffic top tip: which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? Yeah, so we've already discussed that one really earlier in the uh, the podcast, and I'd say the Google product listing campaigns. Ah, oh, excellent choice. Okay, then the tool top tip: maybe a collaboration tool, a social media plugin, a phone app, or just a way of working. Is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient day to day? Certainly, the big one that we use day to day is Dropbox. You know, being able to share everything across um, 
the office and you know with any of the outsourcing companies that we use i think the one that i like uh you know that you, i don't know some people might find it cool but uh it's the collaboration tool called trello um which just allows you to organize and manage products you know into different boards and, and share it with other users as well Oh, cool. I think both of those were men- have been mentioned before and I-, I am certainly familiar with them. So thank you for adding those. Um, and our startup top tip then, if you met someone this weekend who's thinking of starting an e-commerce business, what would be your first tip for them? Research your market. You know, I speak to and hear of so many people saying that they've got the next big online idea and then you jump online and find that someone's doing it perfectly well uh you know i'm not saying scrap your ideas or anything but you know really do your research and make sure that that idea that you feel is right you know is going to work long term excellent advice as as all of yours has been today i have to say um so master plan world you can find those top tips and links to everything else we've been chatting about in today's episode by going to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash 37 that's the number three and the number seven i've got one last top tips question which is if your business didn't exist which e-commerce business would you like to be running quite a tough one to answer this because there's so many uh, good businesses about there but uh, I think it'd have to be Zappos.com uh, they're an American clothing company who've been around since the late 90s but they focus heavily on customer service and the company culture um, also helps that they're a billion dollar company <laughs> uh, but yeah you know the, the, the whole culture behind that that company are it's it's inspiring really um, and uh, he's the, the the founder of the company. He's got a great book that gives you a good background into it as well. Uh, Tony Shea, delivering that? happiness. A yes, fan, a fantastic book. Yeah, and the uh, the culture book as well. I don't know if you've ever looked at that. It's a you know you can download the PDF from the website, but it's just incredible what they do at that company. It's uh, I one day when I'm over in the states, I'm going to nip by Las Vegas and go yeah. and, go and have the yeah, tour. You can go on tours, can't you? Yeah. yeah, it's it's on my. It's sadly, some people may think that's probably definitely my top three things I'd like to do in America is go on the Zappos tour. Yeah, it's probably not the number one thing to do in Las Vegas on a lot of people's list. list <laughs> Why are you going to Las Vegas? Go. I want to do the Zappos tour. <laughs> yeah. Will you? Will you be going to a casino? No. No. <laughs> no, just the Zappos. <laughs> just the Zappos tour. Okay, um, Johnny, before we say goodbye, would you like to let our listeners know where they can find you and your business on the web and social media? Yeah, definitely. So it's uh, the, the website is william-may.co.uk. Uh, you can find us on all the major social media platforms under William May UK. Excellent. And um, I'll add links to all of that and everything else we talked about today in the show notes. Masterplan World, you can find those at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash 37 or just go to the website, click on the podcast tab or use the search box. Johnny, thank you so much for being on the podcast today and for being so generous sharing your experience with us. Yeah, thank you, Chloe. And, and, um, you know, if anyone does want to get in touch uh, with me personally, please drop me an email. Uh, Sorry, I should have said this in the uh that's all right details earlier but yeah yeah um my email's me at johnny uh you know if anyone wants to run anything by me or anything i'd, I'd like to uh i know at least one um jewelry retailer who listens who i'm i would I imagine we'll currently be racing for her pen and paper to make sure she's sending you an email. So um, I know you'll get at least one person getting in contact with you that with you for that. So thanks, Johnny. It's been it's been great today. No, thank you, Chloe. Oh, what fantastic advice from Johnny there. And I know that our, as I said towards the end there, I know that our jewellery um, listeners will be very excited to hear that because it is one of the most difficult products to sell online, in my opinion. And um, such great advice on the on the front of uh, of getting your, your cus- you know, the visitors to your website to trust you right at the point where they arrive with the guarantee and the great product information and having that trust pilot recommendations front and center on the homepage. So as one of our subscribers, if you're enjoying this podcast, please do share it with your e-commerce friends, Twitter, Facebook, over a coffee, over a pint, glass of champagne. We really don't mind. Um, 
but do do spread the word. Um, and as many of you will already know, we've declared 2016 the year of the customer. So if you'd like to find out all about that and get your hands on some free guides, just head over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash the customer. Simple as that. Have a great week, everybody, and keep optimising. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com.